Hello YouTube Frogs and welcome back to another YouTube video. This one is going to be on Zong Li's weapon guide. As you guys have seen, I've been doing weapon guides for all the previous characters that have either rerun or are new releases. And with 1.5 coming out just around the corner, um, and it's time for me to tackle Zong Li. What we're going to be covering in this video is a little bit different. So this is going to be an ultimate guide to Zong Li. Uh, instead of just testing out weapons uh, as we have done in the previous videos, um, this one we're going to go a little bit more in depth. So not only are we going to test several different weapons for his support Q nuke build, but we're also going to touch upon different artifact sets you guys can use for him, and also the main stats that I would prefer to see, and then explanations on where Zhongli fits on different comps, and also finally, comp demonstration. So it's going to be like a three to four fold video. Um, everything will be time stamped for your convenience, so you can take a look. We will first begin with weapon comparison. So we'll be taking a look at four-star weapons and five-star weapons um, in tandem with the type of build that I'm going to be going. Since I'm going to be going a support Q nuke build um, with fast swapping, this means that I'm not going to have Zongli out on the field for a very long period of time, which means that if we're going to be testing weapons like a Blacklift Spear, for example, or Jade Spear, um, they're not going to be at max stacks. So keep that in mind as we're going through the tests, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. We are back into Cryo Registrine Domain, so we're gonna have Bennett to be able to pop the core and then we'll be testing his damage. So, with Zong Li, a couple things to notice. So with his talents, I'm not gonna be focusing on the normal attack. Um, this is, if you decide to go physical Zong Li, uh, my, my guide will maybe talk a little bit about it, but I will not be comparing weapons for physical Zong Li. So mine is going to be focused on his E shield strength and also his Q damage. So keep in mind that uh, my Zong Li is already C6. So my damage is going to be higher than normal damage output, but his Q still has such a large multiplier that it's significant enough to impact the speed of a fight. With that being said, we're going to be testing Q damage for all the different weapons that we have in store for us. And we will be taking into account the energy recharge level of each build. So oh, with a 40 energy cost Q with a 12 second cooldown, Zhongli has a very fast rotating Q. You're going to want to optimize on spamming this off cooldown whenever you can. And when doing so, you need a little bit of recharge to make sure you hit that 40 cost uh, every 12 seconds. So energy recharge is very important. Obviously crit rate, crit damage are really important. And then total HP is what we're gonna be looking at with each build as well. So with that being said, uh, let us move on. So talents, I've already shown you, we have a 688 talents plus three from the constellations. Keep in mind that the damage and my shield strength is going to be larger than uh, what it might be for you. For level six damage, so that is basically, if you were to get C0 Zonli and you aren't investing into him too much, then we're looking at level six talents for both of these. So for the Q, instead of having what I see as 965% skill damage. Level 6 is going to be 639.56%. So keep in mind that the damage that you see is going to be probably 50% stronger than what you would normally see uh, when you're testing. Uh, if you're level 8, this, this gap is decreased a little bit. So at level 8, the damage decreases 20 to 25% versus 50% weaker. Uh, and then the shield strength is also relatively the same. So at level 6, his shield versus this, which is 2.9k plus 24% max HP. At level 6, which maybe Mr. Editor can put that on the screen, um, level 6 whole, uh, shield strength base is 1.9k, which is about 33% weaker than this. And the additional shield absorption is 18% of max HP. So it's about roughly 33% weaker all across the board. Keep that in mind as we're doing these tests. So there's one thing that I realized. Um, as much as I am testing the Q damage, I realized that I was anticipating testing Q damage without the shield and Q damage with the shield on. But unfortunately, um, something came to my attention um, as I was actually testing. I have C2. I mean, I have C6. Zongli. Constellations, I just want to preface this. Constellations for Zongli, I think, are actually one of the worst in the game currently. Because after his buff that he, that he got to his E, um, his constellations don't really matter anymore besides two. So three, four, five are all damage based. They increase or uh, sh increasing shield strength, increasing damage. C6 is really not noticeable. I mean, it actually kills some synergies to be perfectly honest. So some, some units <clears throat> who tell, uh, who want to be kept below a certain HP threshold, uh, having C6 only actually hurts you in some instances, uh, will problems. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I was thinking about testing and I was like, okay, C2 is a problem. 
because whenever I press my Q, my characters get a shield while it's descending. Before the damage even comes through, I get a shield. So until I can toggle off my constellations, there is actually zero way that I can test out my Q damage with my shield off. Kinda sucks because that means the damage is inflated a slight bit because we are decreasing the resistance of enemies around. We will have to work with it. We can't do anything about it. So just keep in mind that for all the future testing, the Q damage that I do show is with my shield on, which means that enemies uh, minus 20% res. Keep that in mind. For my artifacts, since I am recording this in 1.4, I do not have access to being able to test this with four Millilith set, which is coming. We're going to be running two Archaic Petra and two Noblesse uh, with main stats, HP, Geo damage, and a crit rate for most of the weapons. For Deathmatch, which we will be testing, we will switch this to a crit damage mask because Deathmatch gives an insanely high amount of crit chance, which basically overshoots my crit chance and makes my ratio kind of wonky. My attributes are like this. 30k HP is the baseline that I have right now um, with about 1.2k attack, 60 crit rate, 129 crit damage, 172 recharge, which is 40% from the prototype, and then 90% geo damage bonus. So these are our baseline stats. Uh, it's about 60-130 is our ratio for now. Energy recharge will fluctuate with each build, and it's very important to keep track of what our recharge is so that you guys can understand how easy it is to get your Q back in every scenario. So that's two Petra, two Noblesse for our tests. We're going to be testing Prototype Star Glitter, which gives 41.9% energy recharge and is almost strictly just for the recharge. So it's a stat stick purely for the recharge, but it's still very beneficial because it is more recharge than say the Favonius Lance would give. Uh, fortunately, I do not have the Skyward Spine to be able to test, um, but keep in mind that is the five-star counterpart as an energy recharge weapon. It also gives a little bit of crit chance uh, on its passive and has higher base attack. So keep that in mind as another stat stick. But we have Prototype, Favonius Lance, which are our two energy recharge weapons, which will start off our testing. And then we'll have Deathmatch, Blackleaf Pull, which are the two R180 uh, crit-based weapons. So crit chance here and crit damage here. And then the miscellaneous weapon, Lithic Spear, with uh, attack percent and the passive, which is for every Lia character in your party, um, you gain attack percent and crit rate. We're going to be doing two stacks for this. So we're going to be seeing a 22% attack increase and a 14% crit rate. And then finally, with all those weapons tested, we'll have Jade Spear and Homa. Jade Spear will be zero stacks. So I will not be doing any auto attacks since this is a fast swap down late. You press Q, you hold E, and you get out of the team, and you let the other, uh, you let your other team members unload their skills. R5 Homa, it's likely going to be the biggest damage because I have it R5, which means I, my HP is increased by 40%. We're not going to be doing low HP. Again, with Zhang Li and his shield, um, it is very unlikely that Zhang Li is going to be below 50% HP. So I'm going to be doing this testing off of max HP, which means uh, no additional attack boost. But keep in mind, all these numbers are low barred, right? So because we're not utilizing most of their passives, um, they are going to be this is the, they're going to be their lower range of the damage. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, without further ado, let's get to testing. Ben is going to be our core popper. Here we go. Prototype Star Glitter up first. Simple. We're looking just looking for Q damage. All right, no shield, no nothing. Q damage. 54.2k. So we're going to be moving on to our 5 Havonius Lance. So, uh, same HP. Let's take a look at our recharge. Uh, same crit rate, same crit damage, all the same. Uh, energy recharge is slightly lower. So we went from 172% and we're now at 158%. Uh, Favonius has naturally le uh, lower recharge stat that it gives. But keep in mind that Favonius has windfall. Critical hits have a 60 to 100% chance, depending on refinement, generate a small amount, small amount of elemental particles. These particles are given to the character, and also they do affect all of your team members as well. So it is an AOE energy recharge for the entire team. It is very, very, very strong. And the higher refinement you have it, the way higher it scales, because not only does this go to 100%, but the cooldown drops by half. So originally, Favonius Lens is 12 seconds, then it goes down to 6 seconds, which is very powerful because six seconds is a very good time for a lot of E skills. So E skill cooldowns kind of vary. Um, some are really long, but generally these short ones are a six second cooldown. So it matches perfectly with that, uh, which makes this a very 
heavy late game scaling weapon. So even though this is slightly lower, um, I am getting free orbs whenever I crit. And Q and E are both AOE, which means this is a little bit easier to generate, right? When you press E, you're hitting multiple targets, uh, if there are multiple targets on the field. Same with Q. Uh, and the great thing is that Don Lee's animation when he presses Q has a little bit of a time lag after his Q lands, which means that before you can even swap, um, you typically can proc Favonius. So once you see the orbs, then you can swap out and do your thing. So let's go test it out. Keep in mind that this is with my shield on because I have C2. I'll, I will put my shield on just for reference prior to it. So like here. Okay. And damage. 55.6k. That's about expected. All right. So, Song Lee, both of the recharge weapons have been tested. Uh, keep in mind that my max HP will be higher, likely, than potentially some of your guys' builds, right? I do have HP Geo crit instead of triple HP. You can you can offer triple HP if you just want a fat shield, uh, which is fine. He will do less damage, but that's not uh, too important if all you're looking for is survivability and CC, which he both has. So I'm going to just have like a baseline of like 25k HP. So 25k HP. Uh, level six talents probably be doing like 33 percent less than well my value so with the two weapons that we've tested so far which are the energy recharge ones i've been doing about 54 55k so i would expect to see uh maybe like 30k from like a well-invested zombie uh, with some crit rate and crit damage so probably say about i'll give a range of like 20 to 30k would be a good start to have for his qcc uh, if you're running uh like uh, relatively like standard weapons so with these energy research weapons done we're going to move on to deathmatch and blacklift so we're going to do deathmatch first with the deathmatch my attack is a little bit higher than both of the recharge weapons because of the passive so i do gain 24 percent attack my hp stays the exact same my crit rate goes up massively and i'm actually going to switch this to a crit damage mask give a little bit more fairness i want a 6.6 percent uh, crit rate piece because that matches this one looks good because that matches the mask that I've been using uh, which is a 13.2 crit damage and keeping the 1 to 2 ratio 13.2 um, reflects the 6.6 .6 crit rate so with that match in this sense um, I lose a little bit of max HP and this is because of my substat so keep in mind that I dropped 8.7 uh, percent HP here and 700 flat and 16 percent here so I lost about 2,000 HP almost. So I will keep that in mind uh, with my testing. So in this case, uh, I still maintain a very high amount of crit rate. So I do have 69.6, very right, nice. Uh, 178 crit damage and my energy recharge is lower, but we still have 130% base. So I wanted to get this. I wanted my artifacts to give me about 30% recharge. So I think a good realm of recharge is between 120% and 160% for his 40 energy cost Q. Whether or not you have a bonus weapons will improve that drastically. Just think that I, as, as long as I have a little bit of energy recharge, it should be a little bit easier to get 40 energy every single time. So, all right, let's test out deathmatch damage. Absolutely no cryo registines were harmed in this video. All right, damage. 67.5k. Okay, so moving on, uh, we just tested our deathmatch. Uh, let's go to Blacklift pull with zero stacks. So uh, with this, we're going to be switching back to the crit chance mask. Our HP is going to go back up to 31.5k. Our attack is a little bit lower at 1.16 because we have no stacks. But these are our stats now. So we still maintain 31.5 HP due to the artifact choice. Our ER is still 130%. And our crit is 60 to 179.5 which is basically 180 so we have a one to three ratio here which is not the best but i still want to do this because the crit rate is the minimum that i consider effective all right let's see the damage compared to the death match it should be relatively equal because they do have very close crit damage right 178 to 180 right 66.1 so it turns out that in this particular instance, slight attack difference does help deathmatch a slight bit out. So even though we gain our HP back, um, having the 24% attack um, does scrape out just a slight bit more damage. But they're equal. Like if if 
As you guys have seen with all my previous tests, um, Deathmatch and Blacklift are virtually equal. Uh, as long as you swap the mask, right? And uh, I think that's the intent purpose. Because one is a star glitter and one is BP. Um, I would just say that the Deathmatch is more consistent. That's all. Passive is always available. You don't need to kill anything for the passive to be gained. Um, and despite its low attack, it gives a mass amount of crit rate, which is easier to build around. All right, so just finished uh, those four star weapons. So these are the energy recharge ones, uh, the R180 star glitter and BP one. Now we go to the Gacha Lithic Spear R5. We're going to be adding one more Leah character to the party to gain a 14% crit rate from this. Um, I'm actually going to remove Bennett, so I'm just going to use Hu Tao um, as the person who breaks the core. Um, just pay attention to Zhongli's damage. So with uh, two Lithic stacks, you can see that my attack is 1.6k now. The weapon does give attack percent here and attack percent here. So 1.6k, uh, we have 14% higher crit rate. So we originally had 60.6, .6, but now we have 74, which means that the Lithic Spear is working as two stack. Energy recharge is the same. So we maintain HP at 31.5K. Uh, ER is still the same at 130. Uh, the crit ratio is 74.6 to 129. Okay. Our test, 64.1K. Keep in mind that because I do not have a crit damage mask, Lithic is slightly weaker than Deathmatch and Blacklift. So if you decided to use a crit damage mask with Lithic Spear and you had more party members to maximize your crit rate, um, the damage will be higher. So I was doing 64K, which is slightly lower than Deathmatch and Blacklift, but my crit damage was 50 less. That's pretty significant. But for me, if I were to switch from a crit rate mask to a crit damage mask, uh, I would lose so much crit rate that my crit rate would drop down to like 50 or even below 50. Um, and my crit damage would be like 180. So that ratio, as much as it is a just 50-50, just crit forehead, for consistency's purposes, I did not go with crit damage mask. For those who watched during the middle of these and through the testing, um, you guys can tell, hopefully, uh, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable trying to record off stream, uh, which is a huge thanks to all the support that I've been given on the YouTube channel. Um, and those who, you know, are listening and not just skipping around, um, let me know in the comments. Um, if you are pulling for Donnelly Rerun, coming in 1.5. If you are, yes. I wish you the best of luck. You got my blessing, okay? Good luck. All right, moving on. Finished up with the four star weapons. Uh, let's go take a look at Jade Spear. Okay, so with Zhongli, with this type of build, um, I am 82 crit rate. So this is relatively high. Let's see if, uh, let's see how the crit rate is. If I go to crit damage mask, it might be more fair to test this way. Okay, so with a crit damage mask and still maintaining two Petra, two no bless, um, I have 58 crit rate, which I actually think is solid enough uh, to do this test with the crit damage mask. Um, in this kind of build, uh, I do drop my HP down though. So instead of having 31.5, I have 29.6. ER, still 130. Uh, the crit ratio is 58 to 178. Okay. 72.9. All right, and these are for my eyes only, but I'm actually kind of curious. Um, what you guys just saw, the previous damage of 72.9K was a zero stack Jade Winged Spear. I'm just curious, so I'm going to test out max stack. Uh, I do have max stacks now. Okay. Max stack. 82.6. Damn, that's a pretty big increase. Uh, pretty insane, honestly. Uh, just the full passive, it went from 72.9k all the way to 82.6. So that is a 15% damage increase uh, of everything. And that, uh, that makes sense because 12% here is converted into the geo damage, right? So instead of 90 geo damage, we now have 102%. 102% there, uh, plus a chunk of attack, about 22% attack, 22% attack, and then 12% uh, increased general damage uh, equates to about 15%. I would say that's accurate. We just test the Jade Spear on both zero and max stacks just for fun. Uh, let's see, Staff of Homa with a crit chance mask. Let's switch that back. Oh, with this type of build, my HP is insanely high. 37k? Pretty high. Uh, this also converts to my attack. So, 37k HP, 37.3k HP. Almost 1.95k attack. So, attack is significantly higher. Uh, ER is 130. 130. 
defense still, and then our crit ratio is 60 to 195. You guys can probably already see from here, um, given his high base HP, uh, Homa is an incredibly large stat stick. Like, seriously, it is huge. Um, and with with Staff of Homa, most likely you'll be running a crit rate mass just to make sure your crit rate is not falling too far behind a 1 to 2 ratio with crit damage. Given that his HP is so high, you can keep it this way, or uh, for the time piece, you can opt for an energy recharge piece. So this might not be the worst decision, because consider that R5 Homa gives you between 20 to 40 percent depending on refinement. So if you did manage to get Staff of Homa, and you have uh, R1, 20% additional HP, um, your energy recharge you can send upwards to like 180%. Uh, if you wanted to do 180% recharge to guarantee that he always has ult up no matter what um, and sacrifice a little bit of his HP, um, that is, I think, a doable alternative. Um, and it might feel a little bit more fluid to play, but um, just keeping that in mind, right? My HP is very high here, which means my, uh, which means my damage is gonna be much higher. Uh, and my shield is going to be much thicker. So let's see how much damage he does with this. And this is going to be a high HP test. So I am not going to go down to below 50% HP. This is a good enough test for the Staff of Homa for Zongli. And given his play style, he's not like Hu Tao, right? Hu Tao wants to be below 50% HP to get those bonus stats. Um, Zongli just doesn't benefit from being low HP. So we're going to do high HP test and we'll see the final numbers. In comparison to everything else. Kind of excited, I'm not gonna lie. All right, here it goes. And I didn't crit. Cut! R5 Staff of Homa. How strong are you really? 86.3k. Okay, so it wasn't 95 to 100k. Not sure what the difference was here. 195 crit damage with 34k non crit. Um, I would have expected plus 200% to be plus 60k, but it wasn't the case. So the Q did 86k. Maybe I read the, read the number wrong. Not sure. You guys can see from all the weapons, right? Staff of Homa at R590 did beat out the Jade Spear even at max stacks, but I think that's expected because he actually utilizes very well. Um, at R1, I would still use the Staff of Homa because in a quick swap comp, you're not going to be uh, trying to get max stacks on Jade Spear. With that being said, though, now that we've tested all the weapons, and do a little bit of closing thoughts on all the weapons that I have. Starting from the energy recharge weapons, which have the lowest amount of damage out of all the weapons. Prototype Star Glitter and Favonius Lance. Uh, both actually still very good weapons that I would recommend uh, using on Zongli. His energy recharge with Favonius goes to 158% with my build. 172 with Prototype Star Glitter. Um, I actually use Favonius Lance almost all the time because I have Hu Tao on my Homa and I really love that Zongli can still do a massive amount of damage with Favonius Lance and still be able to generate his ult instantly and provide team utility. So my personal choice is Favonius Lance because his damage is already overkill in my opinion. So you will see that Favonius Lance Star Glitter are both 55k on average. So translating to lesser optimal artifacts and talent levels, I would expect the prototype Star Glitter and Favonius Lance to do about 25 to 30k. 25-30k is um, what I think you should aim for. Um, and this is with like 25k HP only. So moving on to Deathmatch and Blacklift Pull. Uh, these weapons um, were 66 to 67k compared to the 55k, um, which is about a 20% increase. So from 55 to 66 uh, is about a 20% increase. Uh, and this is because they have crit rate and crit damage as their stats, which means that I can build more offensively on them. One thing that you are suffering here is that you're losing recharge. So you're losing Favonius' passive recharge, and you're also dropping a solid 42% recharge from this weapon. So consider that. I don't want to go ER timepiece with these weapons because HP's percent is still really important for his shield strength. So... If you do decide to use these weapons, uh, know that you might not be rotating your Q as much. If you're not getting your Q as much, well, you're not getting your Q damage out. So you're losing DPS when your Q's not out. So consider that with uh, the other alternatives. And then with the Lithic Spear, at R5, two stacks, doing slightly lower damage than the Deathmatch and the Blacklift Pull. Uh, but that's because we were not using a crit damage mask. So damage is relatively dissimilar between these three weapons. Um, I would say that if you don't want to craft the Star Glitter or you don't have a Favonius Lance, 
you can run with these. My personal preference from the four star weapons is that I would sacrifice the damage from these and go much more utility. Make sure you get your Q back. The more often you get your Q back, the more the enemies are CC'd and the more damage that you'd be doing off of the Q. Okay, and then moving on to the five star weapon, we had a zero stack Jade Spear, which is 72.9K, 73K. That is 10% stronger than the Deathmatch and Blacklift, 15% stronger than the Lithic Spear with those same stats. Uh, we did use a crit damage mass here, so it's kind of skewed. It's not actually 50% stronger than Lithic. It's probably going to be like 7%. Max stacks, we did 82.6k, so significant increase. And then R5 90 staff of Homa, we did 86k. So the damage is increased massively with these two weapons. And with the staff of Homa, I would recommend um, an alternative to the timepiece to be energy recharge. So that way you can get 160 to 180 percent recharge, still be doing a fat amount of Q damage. Your shield strength should still be really strong. So the best of all the worlds with Staff of Homa, I think this is obvious. But for the four star weapons, my personal preference is Favonius Lance. And then consider these if you don't have Favonius Lance. All right, that wraps up the first half where we talked about the weapon comparisons. I hope um, that gave you guys a little bit of insight on weapons uh, I would recommend for him. I'm going to put him back on the Favonius Lance for now. I'm gonna do this first, then do this so that Hutal gets her staff of Homa back. Okay, so uh, that being said, now we can talk about artifact sets. So let's pull these up. My artifact sets are two Petra, two Noblesse. So if you're doing a Q spam build, then this is the standard for everything up to 1.4, pre 1.5. Um, and the alternative to two Petra, two Noblesse is four Noblesse. Still maintain two elemental bursts, 20% uh, elemental bursts, but you also get a little bit of attack percent, more team utility. I prefer going Petra because I think the damage bonus is significant enough to work to, to be worth it, right? His Q already has an insanely high multiplier. The damage is significant to change a fight. I think it's uh, a really solid choice. Now, go heading into 1.5 though, we do have the Millilith set. So I wanna talk about this slightly. Um, let me bring it up really quick. On the Genshin Impact page, uh, they have shown us the tenacity of the Millilith, which is a four-piece total set. Um, this is in comparison. These are the two new artifacts that are coming out in 1.5. Now, the two-piece set is HP plus 20%. So this is the first artifact set that we have that is HP plus 20%, right? Because we have um, attack percent plus 18%. Um, we have physical damage. We have all these other ones. And I believe we do have a defense percent one, but it's a four star set. So with the tenacity of the Millilith, you are going to be sacrificing your Q damage for a slightly bulkier shield. So keep that in mind, right? 20% HP means that your shield is slightly stronger. And then the four piece set, which is going to be much harder to get when elemental skill hits an opponent. So this is really meant for Zhongli, right? It's a, it's the, the text is designed around him because when you press hold E with Zhongli, you leave behind a pillar which even if you switch off screen, it still attacks enemies every so often, right? Um, so that means his elemental skill is his pillar. Whenever that hits an opponent, the attack of all nearby party members is increased by 20%, which is basically no bless set, but um, for a different set. And their shield strength is increased by 30%. So basically, AOE shield shield strength. So this is basically bolide, but better, right? Two bolide, but better. With the four set, Zhongli will always have this up. So this event, this effect can be triggered every once, uh, every 0.5 seconds. So as long as you have Zhongli's pillar up and it's doing damage around the field, everyone has 20% attack buff and then uh, shield strength is 30%. Now the shield strength is actually pretty solid, right? And this is important because this uh, Millet set is triggered even when the character is off screen. Even when you fast swap with Big Dong Zhongli, you switch him off and you still get the benefit of four Millilith. So I think even with this, with the shield strength is 30%. So keep in mind that my shield strength is very strong. 3K, 25% of my max HP. Considering that I have about 30K HP, that means this is about 7,500 plus 3K. So I'm at 10.5K base shield absorption. Remember that Zhang Li's Jade Spiel has 150% damage to everything. So all elemental physical. So this 10.5K is actually 15.75. So 15.75K shield is very large. Kidding me? 12 second cooldown. And in those 12 seconds, you can tank 15K for me. Uh, with the shield of the middle of the set, that would increase to 20K. So 15K with 30% shield strength. Boom, all of a sudden I have a 19k shield for 12 seconds. You basically never die, right? 12, 20k HP shield is basically another HP bar for like every single character. That's not Zhongli and not Hutal. 
right? So it's incredibly strong. For gamers that don't have a level 11 skill, which is basically everyone, right, who is probably watching this video. Uh, so if you have a level six skill, uh, this will be 1.9K base and then 18% max HP. So at level six, you are 33% weaker on the shield, but that's still really strong. 1.9K plus 18% of a 25K HP is still a solid 7,000 HP shield. 150% makes that 10,000 HP shield. And 10,000 damage HP shield with a middle of the set makes it 13K. So still, that is insane. 13K HP shield for characters. It's like a 60%, you know, effective HP increase. So if you were to consider Millet set, I think it's a very plausible set to use. Um, the only problem is farming it is difficult, right? So right now, I've been recommending gamers farm for Noblesse because Noblesse is used by a wider range of characters. And it's a very easy set that you can also slap on Zhongli. Farming for Millet set later on uh, might be beneficial if you want him to scale later, right? With his shield strength and maybe we have super heavy hitting bosses, I don't know. Um, but keep in mind that the four piece set will take long to farm. So resource management, you really want to farm this. It's, it's a viable option. Uh, but keep in mind that it's going to be difficult to get a four piece set, uh, in the beginning of 1.5. So just wanted to touch upon that. Uh, the difference between this set four noblesse and two Petra two noblesse. Those are the three sets that I would use. Maybe Mr. Go put on the screen. For Noblesse, you have 20% E-burst damage and also a slight utility for the team for 20% attack. Two Petra, two Noblesse is what I recommend because I think that his damage is super strong and can be amplified that way. While sacrificing team utility, you can put the Noblesse on other people. And then for Millith is the new set um, that sacrifices damage but increases survivability by a tremendous amount. Before I move on from the artifact sets, please keep in mind that I personally recommend four stats for him. I recommend HP percent, energy recharge, crit rate and crit damage. So. Uh, for the main stats, I recommend HP% percent on the timepiece. If you do have Staff of Homa and you want more recharge, you can go Energy Recharge here instead. Uh, Geo Damage, because it's his uh, multiplies are so high. And then I recommend Crit Rate, Crit Damage, depending on the type of weapon that you have. Uh, if you're running a Energy Recharge weapon like Favonius Lance, Crit Chance, because the higher Crit Chance you have um, will proc the passive and give your team uh, recharge. Uh, maxing out the flower gives him a flat 5,000 HP, which is really strong. You can see my artifacts here. Um, they all have about these stats, right? Crit damage, recharge, um, HP percent, and crit rate. So that wraps up the artifact section. I'm going to be moving on to composition design. So with all of the characters, I have all the characters I can show you guys. Zhongli fits in basically every single team comp. Um, he's really easy to fit in. Uh, he's geo damage, which he doesn't really affect elemental reactions. The only thing that he might cause problems with is shatter or freeze comps because geo shatters. Uh, but besides that, um, any main DPS can basically work with Zali. He's fitable on any comp. Um, Favonius Lance brings recharge to the team. His uh, survivability is really high. The CC he brings is insane. So surrounding Ganyu protects Ganyu uh, while she's trying to do her charge shot, right? and uh, also works with a blizzard if you want to do fast swap. Um, just keep in mind that the freeze might not be up all the time. So maybe it's not the best option for freeze, but it's still good. If you don't want to use Song Lee for the freeze comp, um, probably would work on your other comp as well, right? So you keep your freeze comp. You don't even need the CC because the freeze is the CC. So for the melt comp, definitely viable, right? Give her a life. ka -ching. So ka -ching in the end stages of the game is focused on maybe either overload or electro charge comps. Now, both of those comps had Kaching with Xingqiu or Mona, for example. Zhongli could still be included for shielding, for CC, right? Um, he's just insane all around. Partak, same thing, keeping him alive. Shielding CC as a melee character. Um, great for fast swap with Kaching as well. Klee, really good because Klee's survivability is pretty squishy, right? So she's a glass cannon type of build, and Zhongli would help with CC, shielding. Uh, Hu Tao. Um, with Zhongli and Hu Tao, probably one of the greatest synergies for, for Hu Tao, because this makes it so that you don't have to run a healer for the comp. Since Hu Tao's Q heals her, you don't necessarily need a healer. Zhongli provides the other half of that. Zhongli provides the immense CC and shielding that keeps Hu Tao alive while she's low HP. So great synergy here. Albedo, double Geo Daddies. Can't go wrong with it at all. Both of these characters are press your abilities and leave the field. Makes your other two characters have a great time. Zhang Li, very important with Xiao. Uh, Xiao loses HP while he's in his Q form and he doesn't have a way to heal it back up. So Zhang Li keeps him alive, CC. Uh, pair it with another Nemo, like Jean, for example. 
um, or Sucrose, you get more battery, and then add a healer like Bennett, and you're good to go. Um, Diluc, just shield and CC. So you guys can see the, the trend with Zonli is shielding and CC. It works with every single comp, you can slap it in. The only thing, the only comp that I would say would hinder from it is Freeze. Right, so if you have Ganyu Xingqiu, for example, or Ganyu Mona, for example, and you have Diona as the double cryo, then maybe you don't offer Zhongli because you already have the CC and you just want maybe another Hydro, for example, or uh, Venti, for example. So those are comp designs. Works with every single comp. Great unit. Uh, and that's all I would recommend. The very last stage I want to go over maybe demonstrating comps in floor 12 that I enjoy using. Two comps that I have in mind. The first comp that I want to demonstrate is a four-star comp. So I'm going to have Zhang Li and I'm going to have four stars in the team and I'm going to see how they perform. So in this particular team comp, so I want Bennett on this team. So Bennett, so I want a uh, Melt-based comp. I'm going to add Rosaria because she's one of the newer characters. I will probably have, let's have Zhang Li with Staff of Homa. So with Zhang Li on the Staff of Homa, I'm going to have Rosaria on the Pavonius Lance. And then the last one, I'm gonna have Xiaoli. So double Pyro, Cryo, and Zhongli. She has Pavonius Lance. Um, as long as she's well geared for Noblesse with a decent amount of recharge is good. And then Rosaria is two Blizzard. Um, I don't know if I even really care about swatching the, swapping this gear around. The recharge is kind of low though, which kind of worries me, um, but that's okay. I can just put a arbitrary energy recharge piece for now. Uh, we'll take Amber's piece. So, let's just see. This is all good. That's good. Energy recharge, cryo, and then crit rate. Uh, I can change this to a noblesse piece for now, just to give a pure... All right, so this is fine. 180%, 51, 144. That'll be Rosaria's Favonia Slance build. And then Bennett is a Cola Favonia Big Slam. So, this is Bennett's gear right now. A little bit lower recharge because I'm going for more offensive. And then we'll have Dong Lee with Staff of Homa. So, and we'll see how this works. Okay, we swapped up uh, Zhongli's gear a little bit to give him energy recharge. He's now below on the HP, but his recharge is now 163%. Let's start this off. Let me increase my HP a little bit. Start with Bennett first. Alright. 92k, and this is with Geo Rez on these enemies. Recharge is still not bad. You have it. Very solid. So, that's generally how I would view it. Um, not the greatest demonstration, but I hope you guys understand that. With shielding and CC, um, a unit's basically... Don't take any damage. So you can do this pretty fast. So this one's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be running... Uh, Zhang Li is actually going to be taking uh, Favonius Lance. The reason why is because this is my preferred build. I prefer Zhang Li on Favonius Lance. Um, this opens up your the rest of your team to be able to do more damage because his damage is already insanely high. I'm going to switch his artifacts back. Probably the build I'm most comfortable with. All right, so back to Favonius. 31 point. You guys are familiar with these stats. And then we're gonna bring in Venti. So we're gonna bring in Venti. I'm gonna put Stringless on him for Viridescent. Doesn't really matter. Good stats. Then Mona. Mona with Favonius Codex so that she Qs all the time. And then Bennett. That should be good. So this is more of a five star swap comp. Venti does not really perform that well on floor 12, but I'm still gonna use him because I want you to see the uh, what would be the CC and fast swap this is. So, five star focus comp. Uh, we already did the four star focus comp. I'm gonna lead with Zhongli this time. That's how I would typically start. Okay. You guys can see the insanity of this and how easy it is. To swap everyone. See the recharge? Pretty insane. And that's uh that's the fast swap comp, so 
Um, my, if you guys can see off of that, uh, 120 to 160 recharge, uh, I would recommend. With Favonius Slants in that type of comp, I had 158 recharge. So as long as you can get his Q back, you got CC on the field. And I think that's really important. I did want to demonstrate all the weapons though, so that you guys can see. Oh, nice. What a nice sunset. Wow. All right. So I, I think that basically touches on all the elements from weapon comparison to artifact choices, to compositions, to general builds, to main stat, to demonstrating the comps. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was uh, quite a different style. Hopefully it's not too long of a video, but I hope you guys appreciate the hard work. It'll, everything will be timestamped, so don't worry about that. If you guys want to recap, we went over seven different weapons. One, two, five star, and then Favonius, Star Glitter, Deathmatch, Black Lith, Lithic Spear. We touched upon artifact choice for Noblesse for damage utility, two Pedro to Noblesse for maximizing damage, four Millilith and 1.5 uh, for sacrificing damage for even more survivability. All those are great options. Um, if you guys do want to do physical Zhongli, Bolide is fine, Gladiator is fine. And then for the weapons, Crescent Pike, Jade Spear, Homa, Lithic, these are still all fine for, uh, for, for physical DPS. I personally prefer him nukes, on nuke support. And I think that you guys, I would recommend you guys build him that way because I think his damage output with Q spam is crazy. It's still crazy high, right? You don't need to do physical damage to do a crazy amount of damage, so. With that in mind, uh, keep in mind that my talents were 688, right? And I have a C6, not that it matters. Um, I don't recommend. So those gamers who are rolling for Zhang Li for more constellations, the whales, I do not recommend C6. I don't. C2 max. These ones, if you really feel picky about certain levels of your talents. But C2 grants you a shield when Q descends. It's a free shield. Uh, it's great to help rotate the shields. This is more energy generation. Also would probably help with the new artifact set, etc. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed wrapping up everything, all the compositions, and the final comp demonstration. Uh, thank you guys so much for the support. This video should be released right before Donnelly comes out. I wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, let me know if you guys are rolling for Donnelly, and uh, I bless all of you gamers for sticking around. Both Twitch Frogs and YouTube Frogs, much love to you all. Uh, if you guys want to check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash xlice. I stream almost every day um, at the nighttime PST hours, which is really early EU frog time and uh, like a daytime for uh, Asia. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the weapon comparison ultimate guide for Zhongli this time. Uh, we'll be working on Yamfei next, and I will see you guys next time.